Good evening. Welcome to Sunday evening service. I'm delighted that you are here. How many of you have ever uh, told somebody to do something and they don't listen? <laughs> I have children. <laughs> so I, I had mentioned this last week when I was talking to Brother Dwight via text. I said, listen, if you preach short and drive fast, you can get here on time. And they're here. He listened to me. Oh, I tell you what, it just, it did my heart so much good. And uh, no, it is good to see Dwight and Lorna with us. They made it safely. And uh, I'm looking forward to this evening. And I trust that you have come worshiping the Lord, ready to exalt his name in song. But I was praying as Jim and I met in the room back here before we started service that the Lord would, would help us in how can we respond to what God is doing. Uh, whether that means ways that we can partner with, with the Crosleys in Brent, or maybe there are ways in which God wants to stir our own hearts for right here and what God wants us to do right here in Easley. I pray that tonight will be a blessing to each one of us. I'm going to invite you to stand as we open our service with a word of prayer, and uh, let's just open our hearts to receive from him tonight. Brother Eric Kobelman, would you open our service with prayer, please? Amen. You may be seated. Let's join with Brother Jim as he leads us in our singing. Let's begin our singing tonight by turning to number 711. Your love compels me. Your love compels me. for his love tonight. Amen. Let's stand together and turn to number two or 721. There shall be showers of blessing. It's more a Sunday morning song, but if you can't sing it on Sunday night, we have an altar and we'll be willing to work with you. Amen. There shall be showers of blessing. Bye. 
Thank you. You may be seated. Aren't you thankful for those times of refreshing? There are moments in my life that I have experienced seasons of just spiritual dryness. You know what I'm talking about? It's not that we're, we're far from God. It's not that we've done anything to uh, reject His Spirit. But there are just seasons of dryness. And I'm thankful for those, those times when the Lord just pulls back the curtains and allows His Spirit to reign afresh and anew upon us. We need those moments. Amen. As we go to the Lord in prayer this evening, I'm going to ask Brother David Armstrong, if you don't mind being ready to slip out from the organ and lead us in prayer. A couple of requests that I'd like to pass on to us. Let's be praying for Sister Cheryl Melton, who's dealing with bronchitis. I know that she would appreciate your prayers and a touch from the Lord. Let's continue to pray for Scott Hester as he's recovering from surgery. And uh, so good to see him with us on Wednesday. And with us again today, let's be praying that the Lord would continue to bring healing to him. Wes Holden uh, is recovering from melanoma surgery and is doing well. I know that he would appreciate your prayers. Let's continue to pray for Bob Cooley. And uh, as I understand, Friday went in and uh, had a procedure done, uh, trying to figure out just exactly what cancer they're dealing with. Um, he did tell me that it looks like the cancer has metastasized to both liver and lung. And so that is very, very troubling. And I know, here was his remark to me. He said, God has got this. And uh, was in very good spirits, but I know that he is going to need uh, the prayers of God's people during this, this season of time. Let's also continue to pray for Sister Gwen. It's so good to see that she was able to make it out both this morning and this evening. And uh, let's continue to pray that the Lord would touch her. Alan Roberts, co-worker of Jim Stanley's, is battling cancer. Let's continue to pray uh, for his care. And then received a, a note, Frank Kearns. This would be, I believe, Brother Charlie's nephew uh, is in the hospital. Uh, looks like a heart attack. Let's pray that the Lord would touch him. And then I failed to put it on our, our prayer list. Uh, there are actually a couple of needs um, that are not on there. One, the, and the family's name slips my mind. I know it begins with an L. They are missionaries to Thailand. Litchfield. I knew if I tried that name, I would, I would butcher it. Uh, the Litchfield family, their 13-year-old son uh, is in the hospital. And as I understand, looks like they're leaning towards this as cancer that he has. And I know that the family would appreciate your prayers as we pray tonight. And then Sister Weatherall texted me last evening, and uh, Larie's husband, Drew, uh, is on his way to Poland for, I believe, a nine-month deployment. And so let's pray for Drew and uh, Larie and the kids during this time of uh, deployment and separation that the Lord would, would just be near to them and strengthen them uh, during this time. Any other requests that we can add to our prayer sheet before Brother Armstrong comes to lead us? I'm sure there are unspoken requests. The Lord knows every one of those needs. I'm going to invite you to stand once again as Brother Armstrong comes to lead us. Let's join with Brother Armstrong as he prays, and let's pray for these needs. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, we come before you this evening grateful that we're able to be here, first of all, that you've brought us to this good place with these good people that we appreciate so much. We ask you to work in our hearts the few minutes that we have together and to use our brother as he shares with us, Lord, and uh, encourage us, O oh God, about your work here, other places, uh, across the world, O oh Lord, for we do believe that you're working. We pray that you work in this service this evening and move in hearts, every one of us, Lord. We need to know that you've been here and come to help us. We pray you do that. A number of things, Lord, have been listed. So many of them are physical needs. We just ask you to take note of the ones that were mentioned. Cheryl Melton, glad that she's better, but pray that you'd continue to help her. Would you watch over her father, too, as he struggles in these days with his physical need? I pray, Lord, you'd bless Brother Lynch and touch him. Thank you that Scott's back in his place, and we appreciate your goodness to him yeah. and watching over him through this situation that could have been so much worse, and we praise you for your help there. 
Pray that you'd continue to help Wes Holden and uh, that healing would be his because of your hand of mercy on him. Lord, we've come to appreciate Bob Cooley over the years and the help and all that uh, he's been to us through the church just down the road. We pray, God, that you lay your hand on him. We thank you that he's able to roll this over on to you, Lord, but we know there must be some real heavy concerns to his family and to him. Pray, Lord, you lay your hand on him. Your will be done in his life at this moment, we pray in Jesus' name. Another one we're thankful for this evening is uh, the fact that Sister Gwen is able to be out in the service, and we just thank you, Lord. We know there were weeks and weeks and weeks when she couldn't come at all, and here she's here both times today. We praise you for that. We give you the honor and uh, thanks for the help that you've given her, Lord. Jim has a friend, Alan, Lord, that unless you touch him, as I understand it, he won't be in this world very long, Lord, but we pray, God, that the time he has here, you would use that time to speak to his heart and to lift him up. And, Lord, we don't discount the fact that you're able to touch the man instantly and bring him to health. Again, we pray your will be done in Alan's life uh, and for your glory. We ask you, Lord, to, to uh, help the Litchfield family as they face something that... Uh, that is uh, so, so out of the norm for them and something they surely were not prepared for, uh, would you undertake for them, Lord, and, uh, and meet the need there and just protect this young man in all of this and keep talking to his heart, Lord, through every day of this experience. Use it to prove yourself to him, we pray, though they're a long way away from us, Lord, you're close to them, we're sure right now would you help them and then there's Lurie and her family and her husband oh god uh, off in service to his country i pray lord that you'd uh, that you'd touch him and uh, keep him in your care while he's gone keep Lurie and her family safe lord and uh, i just pray lord you'd prove yourself to her in another way in this way lord uh, just as you have in, in other times and other situations in the past, make it real to her, Lord. And then this one named Frank, I pray, God, that you'd help in that situation and uh, that man's need, Lord. And for everything that you do, we're going to praise you, Lord. We especially pray that those whose hearts are not right with you, those who are far from you, Lord, those who don't have any concern for their future, spiritually speaking, would be heavily influenced uh, by your spirit and convicted by your power in this day and in these days, Lord, that men and women, boys and girls that come through our doors and rub shoulders with us from day to day would be, uh, would be enlightened to the fact that there is an eternity and they need to know that they're going to spend it with you. Help them to that end, we pray in Jesus' name and in the remainder of this service for Christ's sake. Amen. Continue our worship by turning to 694 it's to tell the story, Jesus saves. It's what we're here for. And if you don't know him tonight, if you're here and you don't know him, you can know him. Before you leave here, if you're watching online, if you don't know him right where you are, he can save you. He's not changed. He never will change. His power has never, ever changed. He can transform your life by his grace. Amen. <laughs>
I'm so glad he does. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining together in song. You know, worship is just better when you join into it. It really is. And I so enjoy whenever you join in worship and singing and uh, lifting up the name of the Lord. Well, we're going to do things just a little different tonight. Are you okay with that? I know we just... Thank you, Brother Ken. I appreciate that. We at least have one. We like ruts, don't we? We like things just the same because you, you just kind of... It's familiar, right? Uh, we're going to do something a little different. Clark, I'd like for you to get ready to uh, sing. She's going to share with us a special. We're going to move our offering time to the very end. And uh, as a part of that, uh, I'd like for you all to know uh, what you're giving towards. So many of you are probably aware of the fact that we as a church uh, decided a little over a year ago uh, to partner with uh, the Brent replant uh, project and have been sending a monthly uh, amount to try to help with that and uh, that was part of the reason why I felt like it was a great thing to have Dwight and Lorna to come and share just a little bit so we're going to do our offering at the end and uh, then after that I'd really like for us to be able to uh, lay our hands on Dwight and Lorna I want Brother Parker for you to be ready Brother John Parker uh, to pray for them uh, at the very closing of the service but just a couple of announcements very, very quickly. Thank you. I've noticed several of you uh, were filling out some of the updated information for our directory. Thank you so much for doing that. If you didn't take a chance this morning, uh, I even saw somebody doing it this evening. Grab one of the forms, fill those out, help us out. Trunk or treat, uh, things are rolling along. Had a meeting with the committee tonight, and uh, we're going to have some further things to announce to you next week. But all of that is starting to take shape and come together October the 28th. This is the planned date. That's a Saturday evening. And uh, help me be praying. You know, we were blessed last year. And we have no idea what to anticipate this year. But uh, I'm, I'm planning and preparing that the Lord will, will bless us once again to be able to share the gospel uh, like we did last year. And so uh, if you can help us out with that in any way... Make sure and sign up at the back. Maybe you're saying, I don't know what I can do. Write your name somewhere on there on one of those sheets and just say, I'm willing to help wherever I can fit. Uh, we can use you somewhere. And uh, I think that that will be a blessing to you if you're able to do that. Then also, if you have any books that you would like to donate towards the, uh, the school library, that would be greatly appreciated. There's been a number that were already handed in, and uh, so thank you for for giving to that. The Lord bless Clark as she comes to minister to us. Let's open our hearts to receive what the Lord has for us.
Has God been faithful to you? I believe it was what? Two Wednesday nights ago, Brother Austin uh, shared that with us as a congregation to work on and uh, to learn. Beautiful, beautiful words. Powerful message. With the goodness that God has displayed to us, may every word that we have to say glorify Him for His goodness. Amen. It certainly is a delight to have Dwight and Lorna uh, with us this evening and their little daughter. And uh, so glad they made it up here safely. I've had a chance to just get to know Dwight on a limited sense. One of the, one of the challenges of us being all the way up here in South Carolina, we're kind of an island unto ourselves. And uh, so we don't get to mingle as, as readily as the other pastors that are down in the Alabama area but have so appreciated Dwight's passion for uh, evangelism. Uh, he is the youth director for the Alabama, I'm sorry, Brother Churchill, aren't you the one that hates that we changed it to the Southern? Because it's been, it has been the Alabama conference since Jesus first uh, appeared on the earth uh, 2,000 years ago, and then Brother Parker, Brother John Parker, had to go and change it. The Southern Conference. Uh, he is the, the youth president of the Southern Conference of the Bible Methodist Connection to Churches. And uh, I heard that some of the young people were like, Brother Dwight's going to be here tonight. They know him from youth camp. And uh, so our young people are here uh, with us this evening. But I am looking forward to what he has to share with us. You know, church planting and church replanting are not easy tasks. And uh, the Lord has... Uh, given Dwight and Lorna added grace for their responsibilities, but I'm looking forward to him sharing with us. Brother Dwight, come. We'll turn it over to you when you're finished. Just hand it back over. We'll take up an offering. Well, it is good to be with you all tonight. And I uh, just want to start off, uh, I'll say it probably several times tonight, but thank you from the bottom of our hearts uh, for your love and support and uh, for your prayers, it just means the world to us, and uh, it's so good to be with you tonight. And I'm excited to share about Brent, and i got to start by giving God praise tonight. Uh, some miracles happened today. Um, you don't know my daughter, but I do, and uh, she doesn't ride in a car. We, we can't make it from our house to Tuscaloosa, which is about 30 minutes, without serious meltdowns, and I'm calling, talking, screaming, uh, choking, gagging, you're just so, she's so frustrated and so angry. Sometimes a 30-minute trip turns into an hour because we literally have to stop, get her calm back down, get her. And, and I told my church people this morning, I called my parents, she called her side of the family. We said, well, you've got to pray. We've got an impossible task. We've got, not, let alone just getting there on time without a baby. But we've got a baby who doesn't, we've, we, we can turn seven-hour trips into nine and ten-hour trips. We've done it before. Just ask us how. And I said, God, you've got to help us. And uh, we got in the car and it was a little dicey a few moments. I won't, I won't, you know, sugarcoat it. But we made it. We didn't stop one time. We made it the entire way. So God, we praise you tonight. <laughs> He's still answering prayer, folks. If you got any doubts tonight, He answers prayer. Uh, but it's good to be with you, and uh, I'm excited to share tonight, Brother Parker. I got emotional a little bit this week as I began to think about, uh, wow, all God has done, and. Uh, I remember when we were at our last church and it became very clear to Lauren and I that God was calling us on and we had no idea where he was leading us. And that's a scary thing as a pastor uh, when you're leaving a church and you don't know where the next spot is. And we just began to seek and ask God and, and say, God, we know you're leading us on, but we have no idea where. And God, you know my calling is to pastor. My calling is to preach the word of God. And God, I don't want to just sit and a pew, God, if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. But God, you know my, my heart and my passion is to, to pastor. And uh, I, I talked to, of course, I talked to Brother Parker, and I talked to my dear friend and mentor, uh, Dr. Michael Avery, and he said, Dwight, I don't know really what to tell you right now. There's not a whole lot open. But I'll think about it and pray about it and get back with you. And Brother Parker said the same thing. And Brother, uh, Dr. Avery called me one day and said, Dwight, I've got a, a crazy proposition for you. And I didn't know this, but Brother Parker and him had been talking behind the scenes, and Brother Parker said, I'm not touching it. it Dr. Avery, if you want to do it, that's you. 
And he said, there's a church in Brent, Alabama that hasn't had a pastor in about 12 years. And they meet on a Sunday morning. There's about six or seven of them. And they have a screen. And they, and they watch a, a Hope Sound service a week late. And they've been gathering. And they, for about 10 years, they haven't had a pastor. And he said, I, I don't know why, but I think you need to, I, I, I want you to pray about Brent. And I just laughed. I laughed. I, well, I didn't laugh in his face, but, you know, he's Dr. Avery. But I, I, I chuckled. And uh, he said, Dwight, I know it's crazy, but just pray about it. And I prayed about it, and uh, God said, don't laugh too long, Dwight. Uh, you're, you're going to Brent. And I'll never forget, I was thinking on the way over here, Brother Parker, when I called you, we were packing boxes in our garage, it was hot, and, uh, and Lauren and I were praying and still not decided where we were going. We were still packing boxes, and I called Brother Parker, and I went on my porch, and I sat on my porch, and I said, Brother Parker... I'm, I'm serious. I, I think God might be leading us to Brent. And he was still, I remember you're still, had, no, Dwight, now this has to be God leading you there. I don't want you to go there unless you know it's God's will. And uh, you know what? It was God's will. It doesn't make sense. And I was thinking of the verse that we all learned as kids in junior church. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And there's a, there's a reason that next phrase is there. And don't lean on your own understanding. It doesn't make sense. Dwight, uh, Dwight is from the city. Lorna is from the city. We love the city. We love the city, a city amenities. And we are down in the middle of nowhere. Literally nowhere. We, thank God we have a Walmart. I don't think we would survive, Dwight and Lorna would, without a Walmart. But we're the small town that all the other small towns come to. And we love it. And, and, and what I'm telling you is my dad used to stand and testify and say, you know, I'm just so thankful that I'm in the center of God's will. And there is not a better spot in all the world than to be in the center of God's will. You can be in, in, in down in the middle of nowhere, Alabama, and be having the time of your life because you're where you know God has called you to be. And so it, it's, it's just, that's kind of, kind of want to just kind of preface how I got to Brent, and that's how I got to Brent, and I'm thankful for it tonight. The first slide, I don't know if it's behind me, yes it is, I, I stood in front of my congregation the first Sunday of Brent and thinking in the back of my mind, what have I gotten myself into? And I think they were kind of thinking, what have we gotten ourselves into? A pastor? We, don't, we haven't had a pastor in 12 years, is this even worth it? What are we doing? And some of the members later on told me, we didn't even want you to come because we didn't know if we could ever, we just didn't know if it'd work. And I stood in front of my congregation and I said, this is the key right here. I said, unless the Lord builds the house, we're going to labor in vain. I said, we can go out and, and knock on doors and call on people and, and even fill the pews. But if, unless it's God that does it, it's all in vain. And I stood in front of my people and said, friends, let's begin to ask God to build it. Let's ask it. That's the best way. And you know what? It takes some of the pressure off us because it's God, it's yours. Would you build it? And uh, I'm thankful tonight that God is building and uh, he has begun to build. And you know, it doesn't always build as fast as we want to build. But you know, I visited a lot of, uh, a lot of job sites. Uh, Mike, is, uh, Mike Smitherman's in my church and he's a builder. And I remember I went out to one of his job sites for months, just weeks after weeks. I'd go visit him and just more concrete, more concrete, rebar. There, there, see right over there, there's some more concrete. And finally, all of a sudden, I went out one day, and there was, there was, the whole thing was framed up. And, and my friends, it takes a long time sometimes to build a foundation. And I think one of the reasons God has me and, and Brent is saying, Dwight, slow down. Just kind of shut up and let me work, okay? Learn some patience, Dwight. I'm a, I'm a, I just want to go and, and get things done. And God says, you just need to be quiet. You need to let me work. And God is working, and uh, it's exciting. So here, let me see if I can work this clicker here. The next slide was a high day. Brother Parker, you'll remember this day, the installation Sunday. And I remember uh, it was a couple weeks after our first Sunday, and it was an exciting day, and, and still kind of wondering what we'd gotten ourselves into. And Brother Parker came and installed us, and my parents were there, and uh, her side of the family was there as well. And then we had a red back book singing in the afternoon. Now, you haven't lived unless you've gone to one of those singings with Steve Vernon leading the singing. I'm telling you what, it's the greatest thing in all the world. I mean, you know where you're at when you're there. You're in Alabama. There's no doubt in your mind that you're in Alabama. And it's just the greatest thing. I mean, Steve's up there taking off his coat and his tie and leading songs at the same time and shouting and hollering. 
oh, you said, lady, sing this. You know, it's just the greatest thing in all the world. And I said, okay, I know where I'm at. I'm in Alabama. It, it got real that day after the red back book singing. And uh, it, was, it was just a high day. And so that was our first, sun, that was our first installation Sunday. I wanted to just get, I love pictures. I don't know about you. My wife is great at taking pictures. So I wanted to share some pictures of uh, <clears throat> when we got there. Thank, thankfully, uh, the church is beautiful. And if you've ever seen pictures of Brent, it's just a beautiful, beautiful church. And my wife and I commented over and over again, wow, this is just beautiful facilities. And, uh, but there's some, always there's updates that need, to be, that need to happen at a church. And so one, one of the things that we updated was we updated the signs. And there's, you know, me hard at work, you know, updating the signs and installing it. And one of the things you learn real quick, when you go replant a church or revitalize a church or whatever, you get to do it all. And it's incredible. You, kinda, you, got to, you get to be the janitor. You get to be the song leader. You get to be the, the prayer, the prayer. You get to be the, the preacher. You get to be the, the sign putter upper. I mean, you get to be it all. And, it's a, and, and the great thing is you kind of get to choose how you want to do it. And so there's some, some pros and cons there. But there, we put up some new signs with the new logo on it to kind of update it and freshen it up. And, and we tried to do things to, to show the outside that, hey, we are open for business. We're back in business. Another thing we did was we got a new sound system because when we got there, there was, no, there was a sound system, but it didn't work. I mean, it was, it was a sound system in name only. It didn't, didn't, didn't project anything. And so the Lord helped us get the funds and another church donated a board. And it's not, any, it's not a top of the line anything, but it, it makes me sound loud. And that's what I like. It, it gets it cranking. And, uh, and so we're thankful for a new sound system. Another thing, that, I, that we needed, I, I wanted was a, an office, and uh, we, we took one of the old Sunday school rooms and painted it up, and, and I'm able to have an office in the church, and there's just something about an office at the church. It's just, there's just something about it, and, uh, and so it was wonderful to have that. One, something I was, I'm very excited about um, that we just began, and it's, we're still working all the kinks out, is live streaming, and I, I love this because people on the outside can see in. And as I've interacted with lots of people around the town, unfortunately, uh, there's, there's some stigmas that have been attached to our church. And, and so, and you know, I just let people talk, and, and I'm friendly, and I smile at them, and then I go back to my church and I live stream and say, hey, come watch your service. It's not, what, it's not we're not the church that we've always been, and there's, there's some new days that are here. And so what I love is, and the people are, in the town are watching, they're on there, I see them on there, they're checking us out, they're trying to see who's this new guy, and he's a Yankee, and who's this guy, this, this is weird, and you know, like this, he's a real Yankee, because he doesn't got any accent, and he, he's, he forgets to say y'all sometimes, and I mean, he's working on it, but who is this guy? And uh, I'm thankful for that opportunity to just kind of let everyone know, and my mama gets to watch me, so that's a plus too, she loves that. Another thing we do, I'm so blessed uh, with the best wife in all the world, and I, could, I tell people all the time I couldn't pastor uh, without her. And so she's been hard at work. I, I don't know if you can see well, but there's Christmas decorations on the outside, and we, for the 4th of July we put up those buntings, and we just, we're trying to let the community know stuff is happening at Brent Bible Methodist. We want you to know that we're here, we're open for business, and, uh, and come be a part of it. And, and so we've been trying to be very intentional and, and making it obvious that things are happening. I want to share uh, some of the special services that we have. And when you're a church that hasn't had a pastor in 12 years, you don't have special services. You have a, a TV that you, or a screen that you put a service up on once a week and that's it. And so I've loved to be able to have special services. And and it just it warms my heart to see how much it blesses uh, the members who have, who have remained. It just blesses their heart and it reminds them of the glory days of Brent Bible Methodist. One that was so special to all of us was a Christmas candlelight service. And, and that is one of my favorite services. It wouldn't be Christmas without a Christmas candlelight service. And uh, we had several, several people from the community come in. And it was a wonderful, wonderful time of outreach. And other churches came in and joined us. It was just a beautiful time. We had all the way around our sanctuary. We, we, I mean, it was a fire hazard. Don't tie, tell the fire marshal. But we all had our candles. And we were singing Christmas carols. Just a beautiful time uh, to kind of ring in Christmas. And a time to reach out into the community and say, Hey, you know, this is a comfortable setting. Come in and join us. And, and, and come inside and see what it feels like. Another one we had is another 
service that is hard to miss for me, and that is a Good Friday service. And I love a Good Friday service because it allows you to stop and just soak in what Jesus did for us. And then you get to celebrate on Easter. And so I love Good Friday, and I love the service and what it means, and it was just a powerful and impactful service. And several of my friends, it's one of the great things about being in Alabama, there's lots of young, peop- young pastors there, and we all join in and help each other out. And so I'm going to Kale's church here in a little bit, and I've been down to Logan's church, and they come up to mine, and we just, we just help each other out. It's a great thing. And, uh, and so Good Friday service was another one of the services. One of these, uh, a service that we had that was just especially neat was we had a, a PR service. And that was probably the first PR service they'd had in 15 years at that church. And it was just so special for them to have a group come and to sing and to be able to give them lunch and, and to send them on with a check. And I mean, we raised, we raised so much, we, we raised tons of money for that little group. I, I don't know where it came from, but they were just so excited to have a group come in and sing to them. And uh, it's just incredible to see small victories and small things that are happening that just encourage the hearts of those that are there and uh, encourages my heart too uh, to be able to be a part of it and and it's it's God and what he's doing this next one I think there's a little video clip with it and you'll get to hear Steve Vernon leading the song so let me see if this one will work for us see oh that's all I give you you got to come to Brent. That's all I'm saying. You got to come to Brent. And uh, we hosted, they used to have district rallies in uh, the, the Southern Conference, or the, it would have been Alabama Conference then. And, and uh, so Logan came to me. He's like, man, he's, he's, he's a little younger than me. I know I'm not old, but he's like, so he even has more energy than me. He's always wanting to do something. He's like, we need to start those district rallies. And I said, all right, you lead it, and I'll follow, I'll help you out. And so he led it. And we hosted the first one at our church, and we had 128 people packed in that church. It was the most fun we've had in all. It was just so much fun, and Brother Parker came, and Sister Parker came, and he preached, and they had picking and grinning, and we just had a grand old time, and it was about 80 degrees inside that church. We were all fanning. It was so hot, but we had a good time. And it's just, it does uh, us good to see the church full. And it's just encouraging to see the pews full. There was people in the balcony. And uh, it was encouraging. This next one is kind of a special thing that we've tried to do uh, at Easter is we had, we did an Easter lilies in honor or in memory of a loved one. And so we, one of the things that we've tried to do when we've, when we, as we've gone to Brent is to honor the past. The thing that, that nothing could be worse than to go and say, none of that matters. We're starting fresh. And it could be tempting, you know, well, it hasn't worked, well, let's try something new, let's forget about the past. And no, I've been intentional to say, God has done incredible things in this church, and we want to honor that. This, this has been a church that was established, that started in the 1930s, and, and, and in a little tent in the yard next to us, and then it became a tabernacle. And the reason our road is called Tabernacle Road is because we were the tabernacle on the road. And it was a holiness tabernacle, and it was incredible. And then we built a building in 1950. Incredible things have happened in the past, and so we wanted to honor the past. And one of the members, Mike, actually, wrote down a list of, I think, about 50 members. And of all the names he could think of, of the esteemed members of the past. And we wrote a big old, we wrote a, got a big old plaque thing and, and had a bunch of lilies off to one side and kind of honored. It took a moment in the service just to honor all of the past members uh, of Brent Bible Methodist Church. While saying that those, those, incredible, those were incredible days, let's see what God can do in the future. And, uh, and so it's exciting uh, to see what God is doing. I want to talk just a little bit tonight about uh, community engagement. And one of my main focuses uh, when I went to Brent is I want to be in the community and I want our church to be in the community as much as possible. I want, I want us to be not just uh, us, us in the, inside the walls and, and hope for the best, but no, I want us to go out. And so one of the things uh, that came up this summer was I, I'm friends with several of the pastors in town. And they said, hey, we're doing a VBS. And they called and said, do you want to be a part? There's three other churches. Do you want to be a part of it? And I said, yes, sign us up. And so I have some pictures here of uh, we, we did a, a VBS, a multi-church VBS. In the, it was actually in the yard right next to our church. And uh, there was four churches that came together. 
and uh, there was a Baptist church, there was a community church, there was a Methodist church, and then there was us. And we all came together, and uh, it was, it's a little outside of the box, and it might, you know, if, you're, if you think about it too long, it might make you a little un- But we just said, we're all about Jesus, we're sharing Jesus, let's do it. And we did it. And it was incredible. And, and what we did, I was intentional to talk to everyone and shake everybody's hands and say, I'm the pastor at Brent uh, Bible Methodist, and we're so glad to be here and to serve you and your family this week. And it was just an incredible, incredible time. And, and people were shocked that, a, that Brent Bible Methodist would be a part of something like this. They would just couldn't believe it. And I, was, I just loved every minute, but we were in charge of the games. And so we got to, we got to go out and be crazy. It's nothing's changed, right? Youth camp everywhere, right? So we went and played games and hungry, hungry hippos and life, oh, all the fun stuff. So we had a good time and uh, thank you God. It, there was reports of kids getting saved and so all the glory goes to God. It was, it was a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, one of the things that I try to do, um, one of the hard things about replanting a church or uh, trying to revitalize a church is there's not always tons of stuff to do. There's just not. You know, sometimes, you know, if you're at a bigger church, there's always someone to call on. There's always someone to visit in the hospital. There's always, there's always something to do. But when you go to a small church with, when we, you know, there's not too many people that you can only call on the people so many times, you know, before they say, please give me a break. I'm tired of seeing you show up my door. And so, and so I've tried to be intentional about getting out in the community and just connecting with as many people as possible. And so one of, the pla- one of the places I did, I, I, went, I just showed up at the Chamber of Commerce meeting. And, you know, they, they had us all go around and uh, introduce ourselves. So, you know, I'm, you know, so-and-so from the realty office. I'm so-and-so from here. And I'm Dwight Crosby from Brent Bible Methodist. And we'd love to have you join us on 10, at 1030 a.m. And they just, they, you know, I think we had a special service coming up. So I, I told them about that and had them, and, you know, encouraged them to come and join us. Uh, but, you know, hey. We're here, and I just I try to connect as much. Uh, the The middle picture there is is the gym that I go to, and I, I go almost every morning, and not because I always want to go work out, but because I want to go and meet people. And I tell my wife, "Sorry, I was gone so long," because I almost always get in a conversation with someone. And it takes me forever to get home, and a lot of times I don't get a whole lot of working out done, but I get to hang out with people and talk to people, and uh, and so I try to just intentionally slow down. I'll take my earbuds out and, and say hi to people and I, I know their names and they know my names and, and, and to be honest that's not easy for me. That's something I, that God has had to help me with. That's not you know I'm crazy up here but sometimes I like to just go sit on a chair and read a book or something. You know I don't like to always just be out and slapping backs. You know that's not always my personality but God is helping me and uh, so every day I try to go and just talk to people and meet people. Another place that, that one on the edge is, is uh, Samira's Coffee Shop. And Samira has been a lifesaver for me. I go and sit in Samira's Coffee Shop at the counter, and her and I are good friends now. And, uh, and she's, uh, she's moved from somewhere else, too, so sometimes we have a little laughter about you know, Bibb County isms, you know, like they, she had one of this, this is, I love this story, she had quiches on the menu. Now, if you've ever been to Bibb Bib County, you know quiches ain't ever served in Bibb County. So people were coming in and asking her, what are these quiches? What is, what is this? And her and I were just howling and laughing, you know, and talking and having a good time. But what I do is I sit there, and I talk to Samira, and another person will come in, and Samira, because Samira knows everybody in town. She'll introduce me, oh, this is the pastor of Brent, Brent Bible Methodist. And she'll, she'll just introduce me to some, I've, I've met hundreds of people just sitting at the counter at Samira's. And, uh, and so those are some of the places around town that I try to connect. Another place uh, I love get to, getting to do is every other week, I get to go to uh, an assisted living uh, facility. And uh, this came from another connection from a pastor that I know in town. And he said, hey, I need some help. Would you mind helping me out? So I get to go and share a little devotional with these people and eat lunch with them after I, after I share the devotional. And there's a picture of my daughter. She's not too old there, and she, she didn't like my devotional I was given that day. You see that scowl on her face. She was kind of over it. I have to listen to Dad every week, and now i got to listen to him in the middle of the week. And so, uh, but they just, you know, those old, older people love to meet my daughter, and they were so excited. And uh, so it's incredible what God is doing. I want to talk about now... Let's talk about numbers, right? We all want to know, what are the numbers? We all want, pastors are, you know, just enamored with, uh, enamored with numbers. We love numbers. And God is helping us grow, 
And uh, whether it takes us, you know, nine months or whatever, we're, we're growing right there. I, you know, I'm helping a church grow. And one at a time, you know, one at a time. But uh, when I, I'll give you numbers. When, I sh when we showed up, for the longest time, we averaged eight people on Sunday morning. And uh, that, my friends, is, uh, is tough. It really is. And, uh, and God, is, God has been doing, I know God has me at Brent just as much for me as he does for Brent. And God is doing so many things in my life. I could talk all night about what God is doing in my life. Uh, but for the longest time, we averaged about eight people. And then slowly but surely, uh, one, two, and a few people came. And we've had some Sundays in the 20s. And a, and a pretty typical Sunday would be 13, 14, 15, somewhere in there. And so I talk percentages. We're about 50, 53 percent increase. You know, that's what you do. When the numbers are small, you talk percentages, all right? We're about a 53 percent increase in our attendance. Churches would love that, right? Well, we have it. Come to Brent. You'll see how we do it. And, uh, but, you know, I'm a reader. And so before I even went to the church, I began to read books about church revitalization. And every one I read said, don't look for any growth in the first year. Don't look for it. Probably there'll be no growth in the first year. And so I praise God. 53% growth. Let's go. You know, right? God has helped us. And, and, and it's not just numbers. You know, we love numbers. And, and I love numbers because every, every number represents a soul. And so I'm not, I don't, I'm not worried to ask God to bring more people to my church. I'm not. Because I want souls in church uh, hearing the gospel. And not just hearing a, the, the gospel, but hearing a gospel that says you can live the gospel that we preach. You can live a holy life. And one of the reasons I believe that Brent Bible Methodist Church is still there is because we're the only ones that's preaching it in town. We're the only ones that's preaching that in town. That you can actually live a holy life. And so uh, it's... Growth isn't always in numbers, and, you know, I've had some incredible conversations with people who would say, you know, Dwight, I'm listening to your sermons, and he said, I'm quiet in church, you know, I'll probably never say anything in church, but God's talking to me, and I'm, it's slow, and I'm moving slow, but God's talking to me, and I'm growing, and I'm so thankful, you, thankful you're here, and we were just, we were driving down the road, and almost both two grown men in the truck crying together. You know, just God is, God is working. Another one uh, that just probably hasn't been to church faithfully in uh, who knows how long. Every single Sunday morning she'll slip in and is a part of our congregation and, and listens to the sermons and is growing and, and, and people are reporting who know her that there's a change that's happening. And, and so I could give you other illustrations and, and people who have been there for, for a long time. I think of uh, Miss Claudine. She says, you know, pastor, we're just so glad you're here. And she's just so thankful as she nears the end of her life to have a pastor and to have someone who can be there and call on her and visit her. We've had others who have, who, who when there was unfortunately a church split that happened a long time ago and we are still reaping that, that, that what happened so many years ago. And uh, some of those people who left and went to other churches in town have come back. And not that we want to poach anyone, uh, but they belong in our church. And they've come back, and they're regular members, and, and they're wanting to be a part and help in ministry. And so I give God all the glory. Uh, he is doing incredible, incredible things in Brent. I, so I'm always thinking, what's next? God, help us think of what to do next. Because... You know, community engagement is wonderful, me just going out into the community, but what can we do to really reach our community? And when I first got to Brent, I began to pray. And I, I began to pray, God, would you give us something that we could do as a church that would be unique or, or lead us to what we need to do? Because I don't know if, how many churches, in Bibb County there's 100 churches, and there's only 20,000 people in Bibb County. So you do the math. And, every, and in Brent and Centerville, which are two towns, that we, they butt up right next to each other, 6,000 people. And there's probably, I don't know, Brother Parker, 30, 40 churches in that town. And a lot of them have 150, 200 pe people in them. And it is, it is a God's country down there, okay? There's lots and lots and lots of churches and lots of people doing things in the community. And so I said, God, what would you have us to do? And, and I don't know why God led, led me to this, but I began to feel on my heart that God was, was leading me uh, to, for us to start a Celebrate Recovery. And I know that's kind of unique for our movement. That's not something we, we do a lot in our movement, but I began to feel God strongly leading me in that direction. 
And so I told one of my uncles about it. He said, oh, that's wonderful. He'd been a part of one, and he bought me a, a starter kit. He sent me to one of their uh, little seminars, and I went to it. And as soon as I got done, I said, God, that's wonderful, but I can't do that. There's absolutely no way I can do that by myself. Just there's no way. It's too in-depth, and, and I'm going to get in over my head. I can't do that. And so I just kind of put it on the back burner and said, God, you're going to have to do it. I, I can't do that on my own. And God sent us a couple, one of those couples that, that had gone to another church and came back. And God is, you, to, God is sovereign, my friends. And, and God in his providence, this man was talking to me on the porch after church one Sunday. He just looked at me out of the clear blue and said, have you ever thought of starting to celebrate recovery? And I said, but, yes, I have. And he said, well, I said, but I just know there's no way I can do it my, myself. There's just absolutely no way. And he said, well, me and my wife have been a part of a Celebrate Recovery at our last church. And uh, we would love to help you get it started. We'll finance all of it. You won't have to, don't worry about it being a financial burden on the church. We want to fund the entire thing and be a part of it. And we want to help you lead it. My wife's a licensed uh, therapist and can be a part and help the ladies, and, and I'll help you with the men. And I, Tell me God isn't working today. God is at work, my friends. And, and so I began to do research, and there's not a Celebrate Recovery in Bibb County. You'd have to go all the way to Tuscaloosa uh, to find a Celebrate Recovery. And what I love about Celebrate Recovery, it's not just AA, but it's a Christ-centered uh, recovery program. And it's not just for people who, who struggle with alcoholism or drugs it's for people their slogan is hurts habits or hang-ups and my friends I think we all have some of those that we need God to redeem and, and God is redeeming and, and and so it could be for anyone if you have some hurts in your life come and we'll show you how Christ can redeem that area in your life if you have some habits some maybe they're horrific habits or just habits that you want to break in your life Christ can redeem those if you have some hang-ups in your life Christ can redeem those and so I am excited about it. One of my, my neighbors is actually the Presbyterian church in town, uh, pastor in town, and I was talking to him about starting this, and he actually works in the prison, and he said, hey, I've got like seven guys I can send you right now that, that are out, and they're at a halfway house, and I'll send them to you, and, and, and you can help, and I, isn't that incredible? God is already sending people to the ministry that hasn't started yet, and so be praying for us. November 7th, that we met uh, last week, and November 7th is the tentative date for us to start, and we've begun to, uh, you know, train and order materials, and uh, God is going to have to help us, because even three people is a, is a pretty bare-bones crew for something like this, and, and I believe uh, our county needs it, and I believe we could grow uh, pretty rapidly. And, and there's other churches who, who kind of want to be a part, and so I'll let them partner with us and help us if, if that be the case. And, and so just pray for us that God would give us leadership and guidance and uh, I know he will. He led us to it, and so I'm trusting him uh, to help us with that tonight. Can I share just something really quick from God's Word tonight that has been encouraging me, and I think it'll encourage you tonight. In my, on my installation, uh, in my sermon, uh, on my installation Sunday, I preached from the book of Revelation. Can you believe it? I went to the book of Revelation, and people were looking at me like you're crazy. But we, we, we stayed in the easy stuff. We stayed in chapter 1. And I want to read a, this little passage to you tonight. And it's encouraging because it's not only true for Brent, Bible Methodist, it's true for Easley Bible Methodist tonight. Revelation chapter uh, 1, beginning with verse 9 tonight, if you want to turn there with me in your Bible or your Bible apps. Revelation chapter 1, uh, verses 9, uh, and we're going to read just through verse 20. And I know there's some symbolism here and that we can get lost, but I promise we'll, we'll get, get somewhere with it. For Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on the account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. And I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches. And he lists the seven churches there. And then in verse 12, Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. In the midst of the lampstands, one, like a son of man, think of Daniel, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame, like fire. And his feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace. 
And his voice was like the roar of many waters. And in his right hand he held seven stars from his mouth, came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. If you have an imagination tonight, you're seeing a very vivid picture of who Jesus is. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, the things that you have seen, those that are and those that are to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. May God bless the reading of his word tonight. In the first chapter of what we just read of Revelation, the Apostle John has this the awesome vision of the resurrected Jesus walking among seven golden lampstands. And I shared this on my installation a ser sermon and, and with eyes like blazing fire and feet like burnished bronze. I, I can't wait to see uh, Jesus someday. Christ is dressed in a priestly robe reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest and perhaps most striking of all Christ has a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth and his voice is like the sound of rushing waters. If you've ever visited, had the privilege of visiting uh, Niagara Falls, that's what I think of. Just the, the roar that you hear long before you see it, that's what I think of Jesus and his word. In his right hand, he holds seven stars. The seven golden lampstands represent the seven churches in Asia Minor. The seven stars in his right hand represent the angels of these seven churches. In chapters 2 and 3, Christ speaks to each of these seven churches through their respective angels. His messages are powerful and personal and specific, addressing the strengths and weaknesses of each local church and giving both warnings and encouragements about the future. These churches were real local churches that existed during John's time in Asia Minor. However, there's also a clear sense that not Paul's, I mean, John's just not talking about these seven churches, but all the churches that will be in the future and in church history. These churches are depicted as golden lampstands, showing their immense value, coupled with their role as shining light for God in the midst of a dark and hostile world. And I told my people that day, and I'm telling you, I have good news. This evening, Brent Bible Methodist, Easley Bible Methodist is incredibly valuable to God. And we have a mission to shine brightly for Jesus in a dark and a hostile world. And, and that, my friends, gives us reason to be a church. And, and, and it's encouraging, especially in a replant, to say, hey, we have purpose. We, and we are incredibly valuable to God, even if it doesn't seem like we've been very valuable in the past. We are valuable to the one that matters, and that's Jesus. Christ is walking in the midst of the lampstands. What does that mean? Well, it means that he's actively concerned for the local church, as well as his ongoing, vigilant, and dynamic ministry among the local church. Isn't it incredible to stop and think that Jesus is walking amongst us? He's walking in and amongst your church, and he's leading your pastor to, to do the things that he's, he's called him to do, and he's leading you and me to do the things that he's called us to do. He's, he's helping us worship him. He's helping us tell other people about him. He cares about your church tonight. He cares about Brent. He cares about Easley tonight. What an incredible thought to think that the resurrected Jesus cares about our little churches. Praise God. When John says he saw Christ in the midst of the lampstands, he, he, someone said this. He says, he wants to let us know that Christ is not an absentee landlord. On the contrary, he is in the midst of the churches supporting them during trials and persecutions. Will there be dark days ahead? Yes, there will be. But you know who will be with us? Jesus. Will there be dark days in Brent? And have there been dark days in Brent? Yes, there has. But you know who's been with us every step of the way? It's been the resurrected Jesus standing there with us enabling us and helping us. And not only that, it says Jesus is holding the seven stars in his hand, which represent the angels of each local church. 
Now, some people think that means it's, it's, it's talking about the pastor of the church, and, and some people think that it's actually talking about an angel that's assigned to each church. Now, come on, guys. It's a, it, we have to, it has to be an angel, right? It has to be the angel. And that's, I, that's, that's what I like to think. And, and to think about that there's an angel hovering over Easley Bible Methodist. And, and there's a world that we do not see, a, a spiritual world that we do not see. And I, I believe that as we gather together, there, there are forces of good fighting off the forces of ease, evil that might distract or, or, or hinder the gospel or, or hinder your pastor from preaching. There's an angel protecting us and watching over us. But eventually, the word has to get to the pastor to share to the people. And what I shared with my church and what I share with you is that God cares deeply about your pastor. He cares deeply about me. He's holding us in his hands. If, 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 it's, if it's an angel, well, the angel has to give the word to us to give to the people. And God cares deeply about your pastor. Monday morning when he wakes up and he has Sunday blues, and we get it as pastors sometimes. It's been a great day on Sunday and you just wake up and you feel like you've been hit by a Mack truck. And you kind of just have this, the, the Monday blues because Sunday's over and you got a week in front of you and you got to do it all over again. Jesus is with him. When I'm in Brent and we had a low attendance day again and I'm discouraged, Jesus is with me and Jesus cares about your pastor. He cares about me tonight. And what I told people was this, and we can know for certain that God cares so much about Brent that he sovereignly and divinely called me and Lorna there. And God so much cares so much about Easley Bible Methodist that he called your pastors back to here and, and because he cares and he sovereignly and divinely called us here to the, our uh, prospective churches. And I'm, I'm just simple enough to believe that if God cared enough about this church, he cared enough about Brent Church to lead us there, that he is going to help us. I'm just, I'm just simple enough to believe that. If God calls us, he's going to enable us to do what he's called us to do. And so you can, you can have, find confidence in the fact that God cares about your pastor tonight, that he cares about me when I go back to Brent, that he's going to help us do what he's called us to do. And so then I shared a bunch of things which I'm not going to share with you because they're basically applicable to my church but here's where we after we got done sharing kind of what I wanted us to focus on I said the ultimate goal of all this the ultimate goal of easy Bible Methodist the ultimate goal of Brent Bible Methodist should be this how can we bring as much glory to Christ as we possibly can that's why we exist as a church that can we bring glory to Jesus and if we're doing something that's not we need to stop it what does 1 Corinthians 10 say? Hey, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, bring your glory. Bring, do all you can to the glory of God. I love David's prayer in Psalm 115. He says, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. He was, it was almost like he was scared that his accomplishments would, would bring glory upon himself. And he said, God, I don't want the glory. I want you to have the glory. And that's what we as a church should focus this church and my church we all should focus on how can we bring glory to God I told my my church this and I think it's applicable for whatever size we are the main question is never how can we make this church better or bigger or whatever the main question we need to be asking is how can God get the most glory from our church and us right now how can God get the most glory? Yes, we want our churches to be better. We want our churches to be bigger. We want our churches to be uh, whatever. You have more ministries and all the above. But God, if it's not bringing you glory, it's all in vain. And so God, how can we bring you glory? So let's end where we began. The resurrected Christ, the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, is walking in our midst tonight. He's here. He's not absent. He cares deeply about your church. He cares deeply about my church tonight. And he cares about you tonight. He cares deeply about you. You've all heard this story, but John Wesley died on March 2nd, 1791 at the age of 88. And as he lay on his bed, it's reported that right before he passed, he raised both of his arms and said this, The best of all, God is is with us 
And that wasn't good enough for him. So, so he said it again. The best of all, God is with us. My friends, the best of all. God's with me when I go back to Brent. God's with you all as you stay here and easily. God is with us wherever we go. And we can be encouraged tonight. God is working in Brent. I know God's working here. And let's give God all the glory. Thank you for having me be here tonight. I just want to thank you again, uh, seriously, for your love and your support. Uh, we could not have made it financially. And we could not have made it without your prayers. And so we deeply, deeply uh, just uh, bring thanks from the entire church. And we just thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you all and love you all. And uh, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Pastor tonight. Thank you, Brother Dwight. Let's sing that chorus together. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. thought. The same God that is with Dwight and Lorna in their ministry is the same God that is with us tonight. I thought as Pastor Dwight shared with us, if you have ever read, <clears throat> excuse me, any of uh, Jim Cimbala's books, he writes about when his father-in-law had asked him to come to Brooklyn Tabernacle, a church that was struggling, ready to close the doors. And he shares about some of those early days. You and I don't understand some of the discouraging elements that go on with church planting, church replanting, or church revitalization programs. But there can be some very dark days. Can I just remind you that we wrestle not against flesh and blood? And there is an enemy that is regularly, no doubt, trying to discourage Dwight and Lorna uh, in what they're doing, but it's exciting to hear how the Lord has been helping them. And you have been a vital part of that uh, in your giving on our Sunday night services. We have been taking up offerings to try to help uh, offset some of, of the expenses. Our ushers are taking their places tonight. The offering that we're raising tonight, I didn't ask the board of this. I, I hope I have the collateral to do this. I'm looking around to see what board members are in here. Uh, this offering tonight is not going to go to help with that particular offering. Everything that comes in tonight goes directly to Dwight and Lorna, apart from what our monthly support goes to them. And uh, I want to encourage you to do your best to help them out. Uh, I, I don't know all of how the finances of their church work, all right? Uh, but when you do things like community outreaches and when you do things like putting up bunting on your church to make sure people know that there's things happening there, Christmas decorations, you do special events, it costs money. And I am sure that they have put out their own personal finances to help make that happen. And uh, so I want to encourage you to do your best in giving to uh, the ministry that they're a part of. Our ushers are coming forward. As soon as uh, the offering is over, I'm going to ask Brother... Uh, Parker to, to slide up here to the platform and uh, just share a few remarks and then I'd like for Lorna if you don't mind joining Dwight right up front here I'd like for some of the men of our church to gather around and uh, some of our ladies to gather around and and to pray that the Lord would bless Dwight and Lorna and uh, their ministry and so thank you so much I know that as, as you give tonight you're going to do so with a cheerful heart and I pray that the Lord will bless you for that. Brother Ken Harms, would you pray for our offering tonight? Thank you, 
Amen.